Hey again, guys. Okay, we're now here with part three for maps, all right? And we're going to look at one of the case studies we examined in part two, um, which is the United States of Cornbread map, which we created for Edible Charlotte magazine. And here it is. And this example, as we said inside of the last tutorial, is, is this is an example of a plotted map, okay? Meaning that it has specific locations plotted onto the map, right? Versus, say, an election map, which has colors which differentiate um, you know, electoral college results with states and colors. Okay, but the purpose of this is I'm going to show you guys how I use textures and some effects to really sort of make the map way more interesting than it actually is just sort of coming out of the gate. So this map, like most of the ones I do, start with the SVG. This is the electoral map we used last time. And that map, let's get it back to its sort of gray Okay, so this is sort of what you start out with. Not very exciting, okay? But what you can do is, like we did here in the uh, United States of Cornbread, is we added a texture. We added a texture to the actual map to make it look sort of like cornbread, all right? So it's like, you know, literally sort of showing what this title says. And then in the background, um, instead of the sort of typical ocean, um, I used a texture that has a nice sort of washiness um, with watercolor. Okay, now the secret, don't tell anybody, the secret of where we get these beautiful textures is, well, we like to photograph our own, but we also go to lostandtaken.com. Okay, and Lost and Taken has um, free, high-resolution, royalty-free textures. Okay, and you can come in here and you can look for things that are really sort of what it is that you're interested in using. You can scroll through the blog and you can see tons of great stuff. Really, really wonderful stuff. And then I would encourage you guys to take advantage of their um, their texture collection. It's 15 bucks, really easy um, to download and, and you can use PayPal to get it. Um, and they also have a, a premium space where you can go and you guys can get stuff, um, which is really, really nice. So. Um, I did use, from this particular website, I did use the watercolor, and I'm going to just search for that here real quick. Okay, and you can see there's quite a bit, right? There's really lots of great watercolor. All right, that sort of looks like a, a murder, so that's not what, something that we're interested in. But you can search through the site, and you can see, yeah, there's just watercolor textures. Frankly, um, if you want something specific, you can buy a cheap watercolor set at the drugstore that's for kids, and you can get some water and paper and do it yourself and take the picture and take a, 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 your image that you create and take a high-res photo of it with either your iPhone or um, your digital camera. And really, you're in charge of your textured life. You don't need to you know, rely on these specific things. But anyhow, um, we would take some of these textures and bring them in. And you can see here in the case of this project, let me sort of strip away some of these, these elements here. Okay, all right, this is just boiled down to the textures themselves. I've got the background locked here. So let's see if we unlock all. Okay, you can see that we've got now this beautiful background texture. Okay, and let's look first at the background. Let's start like a, like a painter does and go from back to front. Let's move those elements off. Okay, all right, bye-bye map. All right, so here it is. We've got the, uh, the watercolor. Now, this was a different um, aspect ratio. I actually sort of made it fit with textures like this because they're abstract and they're not things like type or pictures of people or architecture or things where we would notice geometric distortion. You can stretch them. Um, I don't always, well, actually, I say to my students, don't stretch things um, sort of uh, without using the shift key when scaling, right? So if I were to sort of scale this this way, you can see it's proportionate. But in the case of this, I needed to make it fit, and I wanted all the groovy splotches and different water effects, so I stretched it um, using sort of an illegal way, okay? So just make sure that you are, um, you know, just conscious of that. So my rule of thumb here is that, you know, you should just use things that are abstract enough that you can stretch and move and mold it, and it doesn't look like it's geometrically distorted. Okay, so here is our background, and this was something that I wanted to stylistically choose for our map's background, um, because it's not your typical ocean, 
right? It sort of looks map-like because it's paper, and then there's the blue wash on there, which I was very attracted to, okay? Um, so let's bring the map back, okay? And we'll analyze the map now and talk about what's going on here. Okay, so the map is actually in a few layers, all right? So what I did was I needed to get an outline um, because uh, here I have the texture, and you can see the texture is actually in the shape of the map itself, okay? So I'll show you what it is that I actually did to make that happen, okay? So let me break some of these pieces apart, and we'll, we'll really look at how it's going down. Okay, and then of course here I have my background, which is, you know, I use that for a shading. All right, so the first thing that I did was, there's my map, all right? And I want to make this viewable, but I also need to take advantage of these shapes so I can create the clipping mask that you see here. Now, if you want to get more precise uh, tutorial on just how to do this, I recommend that you look at uh, my minimalist movie poster video. Check that out because it really gets into detail about using um, clipping masks um, for textures and those sorts of things. But we'll do a quick one here. All right, so here is the block of US that I want to use. All right, so what I do is I command copy. I'm going to hold down the option key, and you can see I get that double arrow. And then I'm just going to drag a copy over here to the side. Okay, now I need to make this into a solid shape so that it can become um, the outline for the mask. So what I'm going to look for here is my Pathfinder tool. So I'm going to pull down, scroll to Pathfinder. Okay, and we bring this Pathfinder into view. Okay, so what I can do here is because all these states are really close together and touching, um, is I can unite them. Right? You can see this shape mode here where it says unite. So with this whole block of the US uh, connected, I'm just going to click Unite, okay? And as you can see, it's not really fully united. We're getting little sort of like creepy lines and stuff in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to undo, and I'm going to um, make the outline um, the same color. I don't have to, but I just choose to. And I'm going to increase the stroke, okay? So what this does is this fills in any little sort of gap or whatever inside of the U.S. so that there's no, um, you know, sort of wispy lines that we had before, that problem that we encountered that we're trying to fix now. And what we'll do is then we'll go up to where it says object, and we're going we're gonna to expand this so that it really becomes uh, one shape. There's no stroke involved here. So we're going to go object, expand, and then where it says fill end stroke, we're going to click OK. All right, and now that is sort of one big group of shapes. This is how you pre-process shapes like these different separate states so that they can unite to form one giant outline. Okay, so because I expanded the stroke, the outline of the each state got bigger and therefore each state started to overlap. That's what I want because when I unite, I can take two overlapping shapes and make it come together. Okay, so let's try it now. We're going to click Unite, okay, and boom, look at that. All right, one nice, clear, outline that surrounds everything that we're going to be working with. Okay, so if I take my original map, let's see here, all right, bring it into play. Oh, it might be stacked incorrectly. All right, you can see it's a beautiful outline that's going to sort of sit on top, and it doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm just sort of playing right now so you can see we drop the opacity. Okay, cool. All right, so you can see that we have nice control over the outline of the shape. Okay. Now, I don't want to expand too much. As you can see, I'm, I'm a little bit outside the borders, which is a little bit of a problem, but I don't think it's going to be too much of an issue because this, the texture we're going to use is going to be subtle enough that you won't, you won't notice it so much. But I may have overstroked it, so that way um, the outline um, expanded too much. All right. So what we're going to do now is this outline shape is just going to act as really like a template because we're going to bring in a texture from outside, and then we're going to use this to cut um, and make it fit in. So in the case of this map, I already have this, um, what looks like um, cornbread, it does on the map, is really cement, okay? So let me release this original clipping mask, okay? And you can see, let me bring this over here, it's going to cover the U.S., right, as we sort of hope that it will. And it, it looks a little rough, so it's going to make, like I said, look like cornbread, right? And it's going to mix with the yellow, and it will have that cakey look. So not quite uh, exactly cornbread, but close enough. Okay, 
So here we now have the texture and then we're going to take our overlapping shape, right? And I'm doing this by eye. Um, as you can see in the, uh, the original map, we had um, uh, part of the U.S. obscured, so it's fine. Um, I'm just sort of showing this for the example, but please be accurate with what it is that you're doing. All right, and now here's how we're going to do a clipping mask quite quickly. So I'm going to draw a box around those two. It's a way to do a group selection. You can also just click on one object, hold shift, and then click on the texture itself. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go up to where it says object, clipping mask, and then make. Okay. Uh, it says that the top is very complex and that it may fail. That's okay. As you can see, there's tons of dots, but it's fine. It's going to work okay. All right. All right. And there we have it. We now have a photo that's been trimmed via vector shape to create a mask. Okay. Really nice and clever. All right. And now we can overlay it because we have the shape of the US looking good. I'm using my arrow keys for pinpoint accuracy. Okay. There we go. Yeah, again, it's a little bit over the edge, but it doesn't look bad, which is, is good, thankfully. Okay, and then my last step here is I'm gonna use a blending mode, so that way the texture really ingrains itself into the yellow and looks like cornbread. Here it's still looking kind of like concrete. Okay, so with the transparency palette, right now it's on normal. I'll try a few, like we can do darken. Notice the lines come through in a nice way. Multiply, ooh, multiply looks good because it really brings in some of the yellow. Okay, we could also lower some of the opacity on it. I don't really do that often, but I think in this case I'm looking for more of that yellow. All right, there it is. Look at that. All right, high res texture really coming through in a nice way. And you can see that we've now made our map a little bit more interesting than not. Okay, one last thing that I did is um, I added a, a background. And what you can do is you don't need to do anything fancy with outlines or whatever. I can just make a copy of the original, um, oop, excuse me, option click, make a copy of the original one. Let me get rid of that one right, so you can see. And in the case here, watch, I'm just going to take what's the stroke line and swap it with the fill and then get rid of the outline. Okay, so there it is. You may want to even um, add some stroke so that way this is a little bit bigger here. Okay, but you don't want to overdo it. And then we'll go object, arrange, send to back. And now this can become a nice sort of like little bit of an offset shading point. Okay, now... Uh, in, in the uh, best beer map, which I showed you guys before on Mike Worth Art, I used um, the 3D effect. And that's okay, you can do that. But realize because this map is a very intensive shape, there's lots of paths, like we got that warning before about complexity, it could slow down your machine. All right? And that could, you know, if you don't have a lot of power on your machine, it's going to really sort of add lag time and delay to your workflow. So this is sort of a midway point where you can make a little bit of a shadow. It's sort of like a an offset, right? If you were doing a hand print, you know, it would be a little bit of a way to just get some shading by putting an underlaying color. Um, and it does the job, right? It's, it's not the best, but it's enough, right? It sort of does what it is that you need it to do, okay? You can even do, you know, where it sort of offsets this way and you can play with the angle, all right? So really it's for you to explore and experiment with. It's what I always encourage, okay? So last bit, we're gonna take all of this Put a big box around it and we're going to do command g or object group and now that will move as one unit and then we can bring it back over to our location okay and now we are we are rocking with some cornbread okay as chris rock used to say ain't nothing wrong with that all right so there it is we've we've successfully laid in our textures and this map is looking great okay so what I would now do to finish of course is I would create a new layer and then bring back our information or actually plot in the information that we originally had okay so this is a sort of showing this case study coming together oh, let me bring that to front All right what I like to do let me just show you this this is just a good sort of working um, workflow help is I like to work with layers 
and I'm going to make a new layer. And this is a nice little trick. If you've got like everything on one layer and you're like need to isolate things, for example, and work with them that way, if you select those objects that you want to move to another layer, you can take inside the layer palette this little blue box and you can, as you say, like as you can see here, it says you can drag it to move the art. Okay, so what this is, is you can take it and drag it up like that to the red layer and then, ha ha ha, it's on the red layer, there it is. So now you can isolate just the map or just the information. And sometimes you can go further than that and just isolate the particular spaces, right? Just some of the things that you're working on. And then also, last thing, is if you click that dot that's next to the layer name, it will select everything that's in that particular layer. Nice, nifty effect. So for example, I want to move all this cornbread stuff up because it's not where I originally wanted it to be. Okay. And here's a nice thing too is I notice my um, corn icon here um, is not in the right place. So I need to play with them to get layers out of the way. I can play with the texture actually. So because this is grouped, I need to double click it to go inside. This is a nice new thing. It's been in a few versions of Illustrator. Um, just like Flash. And let's see, I need to go again. All right, and there I can now grab the particular texture and I can move it over. So you can actually reposition or even scale the texture to work better for you for what it is that you're doing. So in our case, we're just going to slide down because main was showing a little bit of a non textured area, the edge. And then I'm going to use the um, layer explorer on the top here to go back. All right, and there everything is again. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. So if I were to go to Save for Web and Devices, okay, this infographic is, this map is plotted, right? It's a plotted map. It's got a unique texture and look and feel to it, okay? And it is ready for publishing. I got a little bit of a cropping issue here, but as you can see, this thing is ready to go. So, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, all right, and the beginning exploration with maps. Maps are an incredible thing, as I mentioned taking me back to Dungeons and Dragons and Lord of the Rings and all the different things that are that are involved. Um, in some future tutorials we're going to talk about maps that have nothing to do with actual geography but have to do with ideas, things like think maps, um, things like uh, 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 imaginative uh, geography like the social uh, network um, map of the world and even Lord of the Rings, right, which is an imaginary place. Um, and how you can use those to your advantage. In fact, before we go, I'll show you one last map here that I did, and this is a fun project. At Queen's University, where I work, we um, put on a production of The Tempest, and for the program, what I did was I created this map, okay, of Prospero's Island. So if you're familiar with the um, story of The Tempest, what we did was we took a few layers of data here, um, a lot of data to fit into one place, definitely something I would love to, to work on more. Um, but as you can see, we've created Prospero's Island, which is a geography we invented. Okay, and We imagined the ship, the Tempest here, sort of um, crash landing all the different parties, right? If you know the story, that all the different parties are, are um, uh, ambushed and put on different parts of the island by the wizard, Prospero. And the story unfolds. Ferdinand meets, um, hears Ariel and meets Miranda. He falls in love, meets Prospero, right? He sort of is put to work. The Caliban um, gets engaged and meets Trinculo and Stefano. And they get drunk and do all these crazy things. And um, uh, Alonso, Antonio, Adrian, Sebastian, uh, Gonzalo, and Francisco, there's a couple of characters missing there, um, all are on a landing party and they uh, have a great feast and um, do all these incredible things. So essentially we are telling the story in this treasure map style. So here we have geographic information that's made up, but then we're using icons and different um, traditional map symbols as a way to um, uh, sort of use iconography to tell a story. And then ultimately we're using the, uh, the act identifiers to show when in the story things happen. So this was a map that I had done um, for fun with students as a way to tell Shakespeare's um, uh, The Tempest, right, and sort of demonstrate how the island looks. So this is just a, a, a prequel of things to come, 
Um, and we're going to talk more about other kinds of maps in future tutorials. Thanks so much, guys.